The box is uh, quiet uh, once more for your day. The horror is uh, back inside with the uh, door closed, Oled. It does not even rattle. We are safe uh, for now. But we have uh, been here so many times uh, before for your day. We think the box is uh, quiet, so the horror must be gone. But just as we begin to get uh, comfortable with our lives again... Uh, the box opens up and the Hura comes back out, uh, biting and snarling and uh, causing nothing but uh, death and uh, destruction. It has destroyed our entire village, Fjorde. So much death. It is why we must uh, act uh, now, Oled, uh, why the box is uh, silent and the Hura is still. Uh, we must remove it from our lives uh, once and uh, for all. But we have uh, tried, uh, Fjorde. We set fire to the box, but it does not burn. We sink the box in the river, but it uh, only floats, even with the rocks tied to it. We bury it in the cemetery, but uh, it only comes back to us the following day. How can we get rid of the box for uh, for good? This time we will uh, banish the box, uh, Oled. Banish? After a long and a reckless search, uh, Oled, I want to introduce you to uh, this man. He is the the finest catapult builder in all of Norway. But we don't have any uh, catapult builders left in uh, Norway, Fjorde. That is why this man is from uh, Germany. Bonjour, Monsieur and Mademoiselle. Je m'appelle Tony Lecouche. But uh, this man is uh, clearly uh, French, Fjorde. Oui, oui, madame. Unfortunately, in these times of such recurrent box horror, there are no more catapult builders left in Germany either. Sadly, I am all that remains. But I assure you, mon ami, I know my craft like no other. My catapults are the finest in all the land. They are used widely to export and import rare goods and cheeses from one country to another, all across Europe. But uh, the cargo of uh, uh, this box is uh, far more catastrophic than uh, just uh, cheese. Rest assured, Mamsau. My catapults are so strong that I have personally pelted elephants from Africa to America with minimal damage. Oled is right to uh, worry, uh, Tony. Uh, the box may look harmless now while it is uh, still and silent. But inside it lies uh, an unfathomable horror that uh, ate our entire family. And when we thought we had uh, got rid of it, uh, it came back and opened up again and ate the entire village, including uh, animals and, and livestock. It even ate Fjorde's pet ferret, uh, Willy. It uh, bit down hard on my little Willy, which uh, caused me great pain. It was also a source of uh, shame for me to see my children watch the hooder biting and biting at uh, my uh, helpless little willy until there was uh, really nothing left uh, except tears. Oh, I am so sorry to hear of such a great tragedy. But with this catapult here, I will help rid you of that box for the final time. I will pelt it out over the Atlantic Sea, and I assure you both, you will never again be plagued by the horror that lurks within. I am uh, grateful for your uh, kindness, uh, Tony. As am I, Tony. Uh, thank you for uh, helping us. If what you say is true, we should load the box now while it is silent. If you to give me a hand. <coughs> Help me place it onto the catapult. <coughs> It is ready. Does the box uh, rattle, uh, Fjorde? No, let it is uh, still. Say goodbye to the box of horrors one final time, mon ami. For now, we banish it to some other far distant land. Be gone, uh, foul uh, box. Yea, let your uh, horror within uh, plague some other clueless couple uh, for a change. Your delivery's arrived. Oh, nice one. Thanks, Kev. I've been waiting in all day for this. Wait a minute. No, I haven't. 
In fact, I'm not expecting any deliveries. Oh dear. Well, I don't want to be the bearer of more ominous news, but I think that box is rattling. I think you're right, Kev. And is it me or is it making noises too? Uh, monster noises if I'm not mistaken. Don't like where this is going, Kev. Me neither, Matt. I think we've got every reason to be very, very, very concerned. You are listening to a Cat Noir Halloween tale, the Norwegian box of horror. Cat Noir will not be held responsible for any involuntary faecal discharge experience whilst listening to this episode. I think we should have that disclaimer on every episode, Kev. Well, I think we've got bigger problems than that right now, Matt. Have we? Like what? Um, like the new box you got delivered that's rattling and growling. Oh yeah, I forgot. I suppose someone should open it up and investigate. Mm, I'd go, but it is all the way over on the other side of the room. Yeah, and judging by all that bouncing around, whatever's inside might tear your arms off. I think you're right. We need to be cautious. Warren! Yes? Do us a favour. See what's inside that new box, will you? I knew you were going to ask me, just because I'm the closest. But I don't think I want to open that box if it's all the same with you. It nearly clipped my wing as it came through the window. It's enormous! You'll be fine. Could be a giant pizza. Well, I do like pizza. All right then. But I want to make it clear. I won't be playing this episode to my children in case it gets too scary. Open the box, Heron. Okay, here I go. What's this? I think there's a door in this box. And it looks like it's opening all on its own. This is all very interesting. Can you see inside? Um, well, it's all very dark. But I can see something. Ah! Teeth! Oh, so many teeth! Ow! Oh, stop! It's biting me! Ouch! Ow! Ow! It's big knock on my wings! Oh, please! I look like leftover fried chicken! No, not my head! Ha! Um, Matt, your new delivery's eaten Warren. Yeah? Who is that? The box, Kev. What the hell is it? Do you not know, but it is coming towards us. Oh, what are we going to do? Quick, get outside! Let's get to the Cat Noir Mobile. Run! I'm really shaken up. Sorry if my driving's a little wobbly. It's okay, Kev. I think you're doing just fine. Whoa. Sorry about that. Whatever was that thing in the box, man? I've got no idea. I think we might need some help with this. Who are you calling? Jim Bond, Charlie's agent. He seems like a man who knows how to sort things. Hello, Jim Bond here. That better not be you, JK, on another phone. I'll know. Hi, Jim. It's Matt from the podcast. Who? Listen, me and Kev are in a spot of bother. Right. And we wondered if we could ask for your help. What? Absolutely not. Listen, I've heard this episode already. Charlie and I want nothing to do with it. It's cursed, I tell you. Cursed. Goodbye. Bad news, Kev. Jim's not available. Have you tried looking online to see what that monster was? That's a good idea. What should I type in the search bar? Uh, it was a monster in a box. Uh, try monster boxes. Okay, here we go. Ah, it's just brought up endless pornography, Kev. Hmm. Well, the box was rattling before it opened, wasn't it? It was. So why not try great big rattling packages? Righto. No, just more porn, Kev. I'm not sure the internet is the way to find out what this thing is. Hang on, look at that. What? Where are we, Kev? In town. It's called a library. A library? What's that? I'll just look it up online. Oh, dear. Oh, brilliant idea. What we need is a great big book of monsters. That way we can find out what we're up against. Okay, let me just reverse park into this space. Oh, thank goodness. Have you come about the ghosts? Nope. Monsters. Oh. Kev and me do a podcast called Cat Morang. Cat Noir. Cat Noir. One of our friends was just eaten mid-episode by a monster, so we're here to research what it was. I see. But that doesn't really help me with my ghost problem. What ghost problem? It's this library, I'm afraid. It's most terribly, terribly haunted. There are ghosts everywhere. Look, you can see two of them over there by that bookcase. Where? Oh, yeah. I say, Rummel, 150 years in the grave and you don't look a day over 30. Why, thank you, Avonly, most kind. Although I must confess, I still miss the presence of clothes in the afterlife. Oh, not this again, Brummel. I do not wish to spend yet another day listening to you lament the absence of your shoes. Yes, but it's simply not fair. I was led to believe ghosts remained dressed in the clothes they wore on the day that they died. And upon my death, my fashion was exquisite. 
and I believe my shoes were spotless. As we've discussed so many times before, Brubble, ghosts can only materialise from living matter. Clothing is not living matter. Therefore, logically speaking, ghosts would have to be naked. Yes, but I can see your dingle. And I yours, Brubble. I may only suggest once again that we retain a dignified level of eye contact for the duration of our afterlife. But your dingle... Look, it seems like the only reasonable course of action. Looking down only makes me further miss my shoes anyway. I say, Avonly, are those people over there looking at us? Goodness, so they are. Are you there? Kindly stop staring at my friend's dingle. Quite right, Avonly. Should we throw books at them? Splendid idea. Stop throwing the books around. I say, oh, take every that. day. And this one too. Good shot, Avonly. I'm going to throw encyclopedias at them now. Watch out. Wow. Ouch. Kev, I just got hit by a flying encyclopedia. Has it got anything about monsters in it? Um, no. Aren't you two going to do anything about my ghost problem? What do you reckon, Matt? Ghost in a library? Who are you going to call? Uh, Dal Allen. What? No, I meant because of the song. Oh, Billie Jean. What? Please would you help? I'm having to restack all of the books on a near hourly basis. I spend my days scared out of my wits. This really is too much for a voluntary job. Tell you what, I'll write down the numbers of the people you need to phone, then you can show me and Matt where the books about monsters are. There you go. Thank you so much. Now, where do we look? All our books about monsters are just over there, under M for monster. Or monsters, or monstrous, or monstrated. Thanks. Whose number did you give her? Ghost Frighteners. Best in the business. Oh. Here we go. M. Right, now start looking around for books about monsters. Okay. Monsters. 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 Hey, what about this one, Kev? 101 Real Life Monsters Everyone Should Absolutely Know About by J.P. McCulloch. That is perfect. Open it up. Oh, look. This page is about a Bjork demon. Oh, yeah. Comes from Iceland. Oh, no. It says she sings, though. The thing that attacked Warren definitely wasn't singing. Mm, that's true. Keep going. Anything about a monster in a box, Ken? Ah, uh, yes, here we go. Norwegian Box of Horror, page 35. No way, that's it. I recognise the box in the picture. It certainly looks like the one that came flying through the window. What does it say? Blah, blah, portal of evil, blah, blah. Hides an ancient entity from another dimension that periodically opens the door and feeds on living things from this world. Blah, blah, blah. Goes back into the box, waits for the door to open again. Blah, blah, blah. Apparently causes nothing but endless destruction, misery and gruesome, gruesome death. Well, that sucks, Kev. Yeah. It says it can't be destroyed either, according to this book. Hmm. It says it's cursed. Countless people have tried to get rid of this box over the years. It just keeps returning undamaged and opening up to eat more loved ones in a cursed cycle until the box is ready to move on to a new destination. How horrid. Yeah, it played one poor Norwegian couple for 600 years, apparently. It says that's where it got its name from, because they're the last known people to document its existence. Does it say how they finally got rid of it, Kev? Mm. Yes. Giant catapult. Well, according to this. They twanged it out of Norway and across the sea where it hasn't been seen since. Until now. But where the hell are we going to get a giant catapult on Cat Noir? We need to get shot of it, Kev. We can't live in fear that the box is going to open up and eat everyone we know. You're right, Matt. What we need is muscle. Shh. Sorry. Who are you calling, Kev? Danny Peaks. If anyone can give us a hand here, it's him. I'll put it on speaker. Yeah, hello. It's me, Danny Peaks, in person. Well, not quite in person. Just my voice. Because I'm on the phone. Now, who am I having the pleasure of this delightful conversation with on this fine autumnal evening? Hey, Danny, it's Kev from Cat Noir. Me and Matt have been attacked by a curse box that periodically opens up and eats people. Wondering if you might come and give us a hand to get rid of it. Well, unfortunately, I've already made arrangements this evening. You see, even as we speak, I'm pulling on my knuckle dusters, ready to go and see Graham. Ah, oh, you two still at it then? Nah, we're just going for a pint. Where's this curse box right now? Back at Matt's. It came flying through the front window. I see. I'll tell you what. You two head back there, and I'll send over one of my boys to help you out. Ah, uh, thanks, Danny. Um, there is, however, a risk of being eaten by a box monster, though. Don't sweat it. I've done a bit of work with this guy. He's as hard as nails, and I trust him. Meet him at Matt's. Great. We have a plan. Back to the Cat Noir, Bill, Matt. 
Hopefully the librarian will call Ghost Frighteners to get this library sorted. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about the ghosts. What did you say those people were called again? Dave, what was that? Oh God, Jodie, get out! Ah! I'm Jodie Foster, I'm 58, I'm from Little Pickenham, and there hint much I don't know about ghosts. I'm Dave Foster, 62, from Little Pickenham. I suppose I'm what you might call a tech expert. I've been helping Jodie frighten ghosts for over 35 years. And together we're... Ghost, Ghost Frighteners. Frighteners. Welcome to this week's, uh, oh, oh, Dave, is it on? Will you check? Let me have a look. Yep, that's all on. You're good to go. Welcome to this week's webisode. I'm Jody. This is my husband, Dave. Say hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. D- oh, no, Dave, y- you've got to be more serious now. We've got another follower yesterday. Did we? we? We must be on double figures now, then. Eleven, Dave. And the last one I don't even know in person, so we've got to start doing this properly. All right, do you want to go from the top, as they say? No, time's getting on, and I want to be home for EastEnders. All right, just do a quick introduction then, and I'll, I'll edit it all later. Right. This week on Ghost Hunters... Ghost Frighteners. Ghost Frighteners. Dave and I are journeying to the most hauntedest, most paranormalist places that Dave's able to drive to. It's my back, see? I, ju- I just can't quite do the long journeys anymore. It's all right, Dave. They don't mind. Where are we this week? We're in a library in Norfolk. We've been called in because it's been plagued by two pesky ghosts. Can you see any right now? Nope. I can see a lot of books, though. Well, I suppose that makes sense in the library. How are we going to find these ghosts, then? I don't want to be traipsing round. My sciatic is acting up. Well, applying a little aptitude to my knowledge of basic thermal science, I've engineered this piece of equipment here to detect changes in temperature, EMF fluctuations, movement in the shadow sphere, and spectral vibrations. That do look a fancy piece of kit, Dave. What have you called it? This, Jody is the spectroscope. Peyton Pendon. The what coat? Spectroscope. Spectrum scope. Spectroscope. How, how do it work? Spectroscope detects the rigour and frequency of a haunting and makes a sound like this. Oh, Dave, that noise doing half give me the willies. It should do, Jody. That means them ghosts around. Where are they, then? Well, let's find out. Dave's pointing his stick, listeners. That's ghost science. Oh, I found you! Oh, Dave, can you shut it off? That's making my IBS flare up. It's picked up two of them, Jody. Where? Over there, by that window. I say, Rumble, are you hiding behind that curtain? Well, I'm trying to, but evidently I'm far from succeeding. Oh, my God, I can see them. I've told you before, Rumble. These days I see you in your entirety, regardless of where you stand. And I am most put out about it, Amy. The afterlife is far from a dignified place. Can you imagine it, Dave? Having all these ghosts cluttering up the library and scaring that poor volunteer. What are we going to do about it? Well, let me show you the second paint and pendant article I've been working on. This, Jody, is the Phantom Disposal Unit Mark III. What's that then? Like a Ghostbusters pack? Uh, not quite. They were a kind of ionised beam that pushed outwards, whereon this is more of a sort of suction device that draws on spectral vibrations and pulls the ghost directly into its own containment unit attached at the back here. Dave, is that my Dyson? Maybe. I promise I'll have it back to you in this original condition by vacuuming day. Thursday, Dave. Always on a Thursday. It'll be spook-free and ready to clean by Thursday. All right, then. Let's go frighten some ghosts. Can I say, Rommel, are those two people coming towards us with an enormous converted modern world appliance? Honestly, things weren't like this before that wretched box opened. But then we wouldn't be here, would we? No, tut tut. Could this day get any worse? Right, come on, that's time to go, ghosts. You have to leave here now. Jody's right, ghosts. We wish you a safe passage in your travels, but you can't be round here scaring people. Oh, whatever now! I say, Rommel, is your dingle stuck in the end of that modern contraption? I, I rather fear it is, Emily. I could do with something to heal the pain. In fact, I... Intense, oh, Dave. What's happening? I think I might have got one of them, Jody. Well, this is most peculiar, Rommel. I can't see you for a change. Wherever did you go? Rommel? Rommel? Are you inside this contraption? What the... Oh! I think that's taken care of it, Jody. This house is clear. Oh, Dave, that's great news. Well done. You've got nothing to fear no more, library people. Dave's fixed it for you. This building is now officially unhaunted. What are we going to do with the ghosts then, Dave? Probably take them out, set them free somewhere, I expect. Somewhere they'd like. With plenty of space to roam. Milton Keynes. Well, it's been another shocking webisode. We found the ghosts and we frightened them away. I'm Jodie Foster. Good night.
Say goodnight, Dave. Good night, Dave. Damn it, Dave, I'm trying to do a proper finish. Sorry. Join us next week for another Ghost Whiteners. Who do you reckon Danny Peak sent over then, Kev? I don't know, but if they're anything like Danny, I'm guessing they're seven foot tall and built like a combine harvester. Let's hope it's Carl Terminator. Hello, it's me, your old pal Warren. Danny Peak sent me to help you out with a problem. <sighs> oh dear. Wait, Warren? Yeah, what's going on? Didn't you get savagely eaten earlier? Oh, I don't think so. I'm sure I would have remembered that. You definitely did, though. You got eaten by a monster in a box that came smashing through Matt's front window. But if that was true, wouldn't Matt's front window be broken? Kev, this is weird. Look, the window's fine. The glass isn't even smashed. Oh, yeah. But how could that be? Oh, and the cursed box has gone. Where's the box? What box? Are you two feeling all right? This is getting too confusing for me, Kev. I feel quite discombobulated. You are not kidding, Matt. I'm having a hard time understanding all of this too. Why don't you go put the kettle on? Good idea. Fancy a brew, Warren? Yes, please. Two sugars and one fish. Matt, your delivery's arrived. Oh, nice one. Thanks, Kev. I've been waiting in all day for this. Wait a minute. No, I haven't. In fact, I'm not expecting any deliveries. Oh, dear. Well, I don't want to be the bearer of more ominous news, but I think that box is rattling. I think you're right, Kev. And is it me or is it making noises too? Uh, monster noises if I'm not mistaken. Don't like where this is going, Kev. Me neither, Matt. I think we've got every reason to be very, very, very concerned. You've been listening to a Cat Noir Halloween tale, the Norwegian box of horror. I'm pleased Danny Peaks was in it, Kev. Barely. But me too. And I think the death count was pretty low for a Halloween special. Technically non-existent, Kev. Except for the two ghosts, I guess. But they were dead long before this episode was even written. Good point. If your trouserial dignity was compromised by the ghosts in this episode, then why not give us a follow at Cat Noir Podcast? And remember to leave a like and review wherever you heard us. Join us again next time for some more Cat Noir adventures. So, did you write this episode, Kev? Oh, I thought you did. Nope, I just had a script catapulted through my front window. Same as always. Me too. Strange. What was the theme for this episode then? The Cat Noir theme? I literally just played it. I thought the theme was don't trust any deliveries that come smashing through your window. Still, wise words, man. Very, very, very wise words. <laughs>